Over the years, I have made quite a few leather items and gear for various costumes. And as leather is a natural product, it is occasionally in need of some care. So, as I'm probably not the only one forgetting to do this, this video is both a reminder and an instruction on how to care for your leather goods and properly store them afterwards. Leather care comes in a few forms. I'll be showing you how to do maintenance and light care for used leather goods, such as straps and armors. But I'll also show you how to care for leather that might have been stored improperly, because forgetting to unpack that piece of armor after a sopping wet camping event can definitely happen. Like this set of greaves. Someone gave them to me with the words, if you can restore them, they are yours. I'm not even sure if these can be restored, but we can try. So without further ado, let's get started. In the category of items that only need a little bit of love and care, I have these items for you. We have the leather armor that we made a while back. If you have any kind of leather armor, it is most often the straps that need the most care. So that's why I want to show you this. We have my partner's leather belt that he has been wearing for, I think, more than seven years now. Unfortunately, some parts are past full restoration, but I do want to show you how I take care of the rest. It's both an everyday leather item and something with leather belts and LARP. That's a really good combination. We also have the leather mask that I made a while back. This is mostly to show you more finicky bits. And then I also have this. These leather braces were my very first leather craft project ever. For this, I used acrylic paint, which is paint that lays on top of the leather instead of the dye that I normally use nowadays. Because this is paint that lays on top of the leather, the care for this will be slightly different. But for all of these, the first step is the same. And that is to clean off any dirt and dust. Take all the pieces apart and remove loose bits like keepers. Then we need a clean and slightly damp cloth. You don't want to wet or soak the leather, so just have it be lightly damp, which will make the dust and grime come off easier. When there isn't a lot of visible dirt, just a quick wipe down will do. But do take extra care of seams or overlapping pieces, as that is where most dirt will collect. This can be done for all of the different items. When that is done, it is time to actually clean the leather. For this, you can use saddle soap. Grab either a cloth or a sponge, lightly dampen it, apply some soap and then rub it onto the leather. Again, you do not want it to end up too wet, as wetting leather can result in it warping or degrading. The saddle soap can be applied to all smooth surfaces, so all of the fronts and the backs of items where the leather has been burnished. You do not want to apply this to any leather that is soft or fluffy, such as unburnished grain sides or suets. Saddle soap is a gentle kind of soap that cleans and slightly conditions the leather. You can always think back to leather being skin, but where we make our own oils to keep our skin soft and supple, leather does not do that anymore, so we want to replenish those oils. This is also why you shouldn't use the kind of soaps that we use on our skin, as those are too harsh and will strip away too much moisture. You can kind of compare saddle soap to a moisturizing shower gel. It is mostly meant to clean, but it does slightly moisturize. Saddle soap is made by many different manufacturers and it can vary a bit. So do always start with a small test piece to make sure it doesn't discolor your leather too much. For the leather items that have a finish, the saddle soap will only do the cleaning bit. Depending on how much resiline it was finished with, the soap will not penetrate the finish, so it won't actually touch the leather. The exception to this is on places that have been bent very much, such as the straps, where the resiline layer might have cracked. If you feel there is a lot of soap left after rubbing it in, you can wipe away the excess with a clean cloth. For things fully painted with acrylic, it definitely only touches the paint. But a light cleaning with the saddle soap won't hurt. Just keep it gentle. You do not want to rub off the paint. And again, wipe away the excess after. When all of the leather is fully dry again, this is a good moment to do any repairs if needed. In this case, some of the acrylic could use a new paint layer, and there were a few edges that could use another burnish. Then we can get to conditioning. You can do this in a version with one, or a version with two steps. The version with two steps has a separate conditioner and polish, but I happen to have this around, which is a combination between both. In general, a conditioner consists of either waxes or oils, and its main purpose is to make the leather soft and supple again by reintroducing the lost oils. See it as a body lotion for leather. You want to rub it until the leather feels smooth and conditioned, but there isn't an obvious layer of wax or oil left on the leather. 
Pay some extra attention to the bits that are under a lot of stress and movement, such as the straps. They need the extra oils the most. This can also be done to the backs of the pieces that are smooth. Conditioning will not fix leather that's already broken. So if your leather looks like this belt, it cannot be fully repaired this way. However, doing maintenance like this will prevent it from degrading further. Then leave the piece for a bit, so it can soak excess up if needed. When that is done, grab another piece of clean cloth to both wipe away the excess and start buffing the piece. This brings back the shine and the depth of the color. If you use the separate conditioner, you can also wipe away the excess and then apply a polish if you want to, which can be buffed in the same way as this. Considering acrylic painted and sealed leathers cannot soak things through the top layers, it doesn't make much sense to condition them unless the top layer is cracked. However, if you want a nice shine, you can consider adding a layer of polish. And with that, our general leather care is done. Time to see if we can fix that slightly more worn piece. When you have leather that's this bad, the first thing you want to do is make sure you take it out of the wet and damp environment and put it somewhere so it can dry. Do not put it on a heater, do not use a hairdryer or heat gun, just make sure that it dries because the heat is bad for the leather itself, but you want the mold to dry out. And as a side note, you might also not want to put this in a living space because it smells really bad. Then the first step is to brush off the worst of the mold. Do this preferably outside, but at least in a well-ventilated area and wear something of a face mask. Grab a brush and try to get as much gone as possible. Go over every bit of surface and don't forget to clean under straps or other overlapping bits. Once the mold is removed as much as possible, we can get started on the saddle soap. In theory, this works the same as for the other items, just a lot, lot more thorough. As this leather has wrinkled and shrunk from either the wet storage or the mold, to get the soap in the creases, you can bend the leather along the crease and lather it in there. Normally, I wouldn't recommend to bend leather this much as it might misshape the piece, but hey, in this case, it would have been thrown away otherwise. Again, don't forget to clean under the straps and in every tiny crack. It might be even more important here, because the mold will have spread everywhere, and the more mold is gone, the less smelly it will end up being. And the same goes for the back. In the first half, I recommended not to soap grain sides of the leather, but in this case, it has flattened from use in a lot of places already, and we just want this as clean as possible. So the entire back is soaked as well. I'm actually rather surprised at how well it cleans up. Yes, the back will keep splotches where the mold was, but that's because mold can change the color of the leather itself. The splotches does not mean there is still mold, just where it once was. After letting it sit and starting to buff the gaiters with a cloth, I am noticing I'm not really happy with the conditioning part of this wax. It was sold to me as a total care product, but I have a feeling it is more on the polish side than on the conditioning side. It was enough for the general care section, but on this one, the leather is still feeling rather stiff and dry. So, because this is one big experiment anyway, I am going to oil it after all. Normally, this would go before a polish, as the polish wax creates a nice finish and the oil would dull it again, but in this case, I don't really mind. As I do not have any leather specific conditioner around, I am using pure jojoba oil. You can use pure oils like this, but do not use an oil that can go rancid, such as olive oil. And well, I am liking this. Visually it might not change a lot, but the leather feels a lot more supple, especially on the straps. Then a tiny bit of cleanup on the metal bits, and I'm calling it a day. I could do more and also fix the stitching and such, but at some point it's just enough, and maybe I also need some time to edit this video and such. But taking care of your leather only goes so far if you aren't storing it properly. So to prevent leather from ending up like these gaiters, or warping out of shape, here are some tips for proper storage. First of all, make sure all of the items are dry before storing them to prevent the mold. When you arrive home, take them out of the bag and try to let them dry in a way that they can keep their shape. I store most of my costumes in these stackable IKEA boxes, one box per costume. With them being translucent, I can always see which costume is in them. I put the smaller items in these boxes in such a way that they can keep their shape as much as possible. 
Bigger items can be hung in the closet if you pat the coat hanger a bit, so the item has some surface to rest on. And the plain unused leather is rolled up and these rolls are stored laying flat. In all cases, it is important that the leather is stored away from direct sunlight, dampness or heat to make sure that the leather doesn't degrade, warp or discolor. I'm quite surprised and happy with how well these gaiters turned out. I'll store them with the other shoes later, but for now, I'll keep them here so I can regularly check if any more mold develops, so I can deal with it immediately. And with that, your leather item should be good to go for the next event. Considering LARP items aren't daily wear items, you don't have to condition them that often. I would recommend checking them over once a year and do all of this if you notice your leather is starting to become a bit dry. Give them some extra care if they have been out in heavy rain or very warm in sunny conditions. If there are any more questions, do not hesitate to ask them in the comments. And if you found this info useful, you could consider a Ko-Fi donation so I can buy a new tin of saddle soap. If this inspired you to get started with leather craft yourself, you might want to check out this video. And with that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.